Yesterday, Samsung announced something that tech aficionados have been waiting for for a long time. A phone that can fold into a tablet. Yes, Samsung actually is releasing a phone that you can spread apart into a tablet interface. And regardless of the practicality of the tech at this time, I think that a lot of people out there, whether you're into Apple phones, whether you're into Android, Samsung, Google, whatever, I think you can appreciate the technology that goes behind something of a device of this nature. I've also been watching a lot of videos on this phone and on the subject matter in general with a lot of people liking this phone and also a lot of people bashing it, some of it warranted and some of it unwarranted. But there's also a hot take out there that I really want to address and that is that Samsung with this Galaxy Fold is out innovating Apple. And that is an opinion out there that because Apple wasn't the first to release a foldable phone that they're somehow now behind, that they aren't innovating anymore, and that is that Samsung somehow made a technological leapfrog ahead of Apple. But that kinda isn't the case. Because Apple wouldn't release the phone that Samsung released yesterday. And even if you're a fan of the Galaxy Fold and you're a fan of this foldable phone concept, you do have to admit to yourself and you do have to realize that this is a device that is full of compromises. So let's talk about the design of the Galaxy Fold. And the biggest compromise to me is when you're using the device, when it's in that regular phone mode. The design of that front part looks plain weird to me. It's got huge black bezels all around the front of the phone. It looks like a phone that was released five years ago instead of a phone that was released yesterday. The display for a flagship phone in 2019 is pretty small too with only 4.6 inches and the compromises of using this phone with all of these black bezels and black bars even though it doesn't look right to me, it also looks like having the phone designed this way is going to create some problems when using it. So for example, when you're typing on that part of the phone and by having all that extra space around it, it's probably going to impact that experience. And if you're buying this phone and you're getting this 4.6 inch screen, I really don't think you're gonna be spending much time in the mode where it's folded up. Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit unfair by bashing this phone when it's unfolded. I mean, the whole purpose of this phone is that you can fold it up into this big, beautiful display, right? And when you do unfold it, this phone does look like a phone from the future, but again, we are faced with more compromises. First off the bat, you do have this top right corner where you're not really using any of the screen real estate. For all intents and purposes, this phone has a big top right notch. And I gotta imagine when they're doing the screen measurements from the top left to the bottom right, they aren't really calculating the fact that there is a big top portion of the screen missing. Now yes, you can fold this out into a 7.3 inch display and that might sound like it's big too at first and a lot of the press images, a lot of the shots of the phone close up make this look like a huge, big, expansive screen, but 7.3 inches is kind of tiny for a tablet. Even the iPad mini, which is too small for a lot of people, is 7.9 inches. The regular iPad is 9.7 inches and the new iPad Pros are 11 inches and 12.9 inches. I personally had a hard time deciding if I should get the 11 inch iPad Pro versus the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And all of a sudden you're saying that a 7.3 inch screen is gonna be big enough for everything I need to do. And that's not going to be the case, especially for content creation. I really like a bigger screen on a device for that. And I think 7.3 inches is just going to be too tiny to fulfill those needs. I think this point is really illustrated when you have the Samsung CEO on stage holding the phone. Take a look at this image of him holding the phone. That does not look like a big screen. See, for me, I think the dream would be to have a phone that is about the size of an iPhone, and then you can unfold that into something the size of about a 9.7 inch iPad. It also remains to see what kind of software advantages this Galaxy Fold will have. Now on stage, they did demonstrate some of the advantages of having a slightly bigger screen would give you, like doing multitasking. And while honestly, I think that was a pretty cool idea of having these separate windows for multitasking, there has to be more than that for you to be spending the money you're spending on the Galaxy Fold. And you also have to have the developer support, especially third-party developer support, to take advantage of this 7.3 inch screen. And if you're used to getting iPads, you probably know that software developers take a pretty long time to update their apps to fit a native screen size. And I'm guessing the Galaxy Fold isn't gonna sell that many units based on the fact that it's priced at 
$1,980. So as someone who is potentially in the market to buy this thing, you have to ask yourself, are you okay with having a lot of apps that probably aren't going to be updated to fit the screen size, which are probably going to have a lot of quirks, a lot of bugs dealing with this going from a phone mode to a tablet mode. And besides the software limitations that Samsung is probably going to face with this Galaxy Fold, you also have to ask yourself what kind of hardware limitations and what kind of hardware compromises are you getting with this device? And I think that's going to be painfully apparent once people start to get their hands on this because the battery in this device isn't much bigger than the phone batteries that Samsung is currently putting into their phones, but it has to power a much bigger display than they're used to. And if you know anything about phone batteries, the thing that takes up the most battery life is just having your display on. So having a device with a bigger screen is going to take up a lot more battery. So for all intents and purposes, this is a phone that right out of the gate with its first generation, and make no mistake, this is a very first generation product. As an average consumer, this is something you're not going to want to buy for the first iteration. Which brings me back to my next point of people seeing this phone and realizing that it is a pretty cool idea, a pretty cool concept, and in a way, a hardware achievement for Samsung. But then there are people saying that Apple isn't innovating anymore and that Apple should have been the first ones out of the gate with a foldable phone. And I think to really understand this argument, you need to understand the history of Apple and its product releases. The iPod wasn't the first MP3 player. There were plenty of MP3 players out before the iPod, but the iPod did a lot of things right. They put the right hard drive inside of it so you could fit a thousand songs in your pocket. But not only aside from the hardware standpoint of the iPod, they also did a really good job on the software experience of the iPod. So it was easy to sync up to your computer, get your playlist there, you had a place to go download your songs, and you also had a really good interface for scrolling through and finding your music. The iPhone also wasn't the first smartphone. You had a lot of smartphones out there before the iPhone was even released. But Apple saw the opportunity there and the mistakes that other smartphone makers were making by releasing these phones that had most of the phone body taken up with keyboards instead of a display. Apple perfected the technology for a touch screen and then put in what at the time was a big 3.5 inch display and it had no physical keyboard. And the same thing can be said about even the iPad. The iPad wasn't the first tablet out there. There were Windows tablets that needed a stylus to control. They were super big and bulky. They even had handles on some of them. They saw the problems with tablet software and how you needed bigger touch icons that you can control with your fingers and you didn't need a stylus to operate the device. Sure, they would go ahead and add the Apple Pencil as an artist tool later down the line, but you can still just buy an iPad and only use your 10 fingers to operate the device. You don't need a stylus to operate it. And we can go on and on in other areas where Apple has innovated, even with things like the Apple Watch. Apple wasn't the first one to release a smartwatch, but I don't think there's going to be many people arguing today that the Apple Watch isn't the best smartwatch on the market. And even something as little as AirPods with people doing wireless headphones way before AirPods came out, when AirPods came out, they got the concept right, they got the right size, they got the right idea of how to charge these things. So we could see Apple take the same exact approach to this foldable phone. In fact, Apple's had foldable phone patents for quite some time now. Like I said during the start of this video, the Galaxy Fold isn't a phone that Apple would make. There's still too many compromises for Apple anyway, to release a phone like that that isn't going to target a mass market. And I think this really comes to the mindset of Apple, which is not to be the first one to make a product, but the first ones to get it right. And who even knows if Apple will release a foldable phone. If these things prove not to be popular at a starting price of $2,000, and Samsung takes a big loss on this, if the market demand isn't there, if there really isn't a way to make this into a better product than just a regular old smartphone, because as it currently stands, you could get an iPhone XS and an iPad Pro for less money than a Galaxy Fold, and you're probably going to have a better experience on both of those individual devices than you would just buying a Galaxy Fold. Now don't get me wrong, I don't want you to walk away from this video completely thinking that I'm dismissing the Galaxy Fold. I am dismissing it for the mass market of consumers out there. I don't think it's going to be a successful product, especially at the $2,000 starting price, 
but I do think it is a cool piece of tech. And as someone who is into technology, as someone who even likes the idea of imperfect technology that's in its first stages, as someone who likes to think of the potential of the future and where we could see this device going in two to three years, the Galaxy Fold does interest me and I'm actually thinking about picking one up for myself to use. But that doesn't mean that Apple is sitting on the sidelines and not innovating. And I think we could see an Apple foldable phone in two to three years or Maybe even Apple skips over this foldable phone thing and maybe goes into something else. Foldable phones could potentially be the next 3D TVs. I don't think they would be, but potentially they could be. But maybe Apple doesn't even go the foldable phone route. Maybe they just work on AR glasses and that's the next big thing that everyone else latches onto. But enough about what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Is Samsung out innovating Apple? Is Apple waiting to perfect this technology before releasing a product? Also, let me know. Do you plan on picking up a Galaxy Fold? Do you plan on purchasing one? Do you think the technology is cool? If you want to support the channel in any way, make sure you check out the links in the description. I'll have a link to my merch store as well as the link to my Amazon affiliate. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.